I'm Bridget Fettesey, and this is your Dumpster Fire for the month of October 1793. She wants to eat the cake. (laughs) If you want to see more ridiculous things like this or the behind the scenes where I eat cake... Mmm. Mmm. You should subscribe to Fetacy.com to see the unedited version of this, as well as all of our other dumpster fires. And you get a community. And if you're a lady, you get workouts. And you get to see behind the scenes pictures and so much more at Fetacy.com. Link is in the description below. It's the best way to support this show, this crazy, crazy ass show. Starting it off with cake for every pleb. A cake for every pleb. <laughs> Marie Antoinette is executed. Ah, well, it's about damn time. <laughs> 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 I am merely posing. I, I went and stole this off of her body. <laughs> That's actually where I got this wig. I was, I'm one of the plebs, I'm only merely posing as a noble, although I can't pose as a noble for too long, or they'll come find me and kill me. Things have gotten a little bit crazy here in the French Revolution. It seems that the the uh, poor, instead of eating cake, as was suggested by Marie Antoinette, have decided to eat the rich instead. They <laughs> executed the queen. I mean, the queen. <laughs> this is shocking. For this time, the queen is dead. There will be no more queen. And meanwhile, I was promised cake. I guess allegedly, Marie Antoinette told us all that we could eat cake when we were starving. And now I am eating cake. We're starting rumors here. Yeah, that was uh, propaganda. Yeah, things are getting a little crazy. But I feel like it's going to die down. You know, these nobles, they had it coming. They had it coming. You can't just let populations of people starve while you are all in your fancies redoing your palaces. (laughs) While people are not even eating food, they don't have any bread. And you expect them to just sit there and take it? These are the people. You should be afraid of the people. And apparently you weren't afraid enough. Because now you're all dead. We're coming for you. Uh-huh. Executed! <laughs> hmm, I hate to tell you, but terror time has begun. We are coming for all the nobles. That's right, it's terror time! We're gonna chop off all your heads. We've got guillotines galore. I feel like I'm selling guillotines. Come on down to the guillotine warehouse. We have guillotines galore. There's never been a guillotine old Frigid Fantasy couldn't sell. All I am saying is execution culture is coming for everything you hold dear. I am going to call this terror time. I think it's going to stick throughout the ages. It's got a ring to it. And we're going to come for all the nobles, but then we'll stop right there. I don't foresee this getting out of hand or maybe something like suddenly you're, you say something wrong and execution culture comes for you or you're considered, once we run out of nobles, this will kind of run its course, right? Do, do we agree? Yes. Agreed. They won't just yes. co- start coming for anyone they dislike. No, no, they would never start coming for anyone they just dislike or anyone who disagrees with them. They're not going to turn on one another. No one's going to be asking the question, has execution culture gone too far? <laughs> this is going to just, we, we need to get, we need to purge some nobles. And then that's it. Look, again, they had it coming. You can't let your people starve and take all the money and tax them even more and expect them to just sit there and take it forever. Eventually, execution culture will come for you. People say execution culture isn't real, but I'm telling you, the awakened are coming for you and your family. 
And your job. And your little dog, too. The Louvre opens to the public. We will now give this palace back to the plebs. It is about time that they're allowed to go see some art. And you tried to stop us from making art because art is what rallies up the people. It's a it's a rallying cry for the plebs. It's a way to get the message of angst and frustration out there. And we will not be silenced. We will have our own museum where lots of people will go. And never in the future will someone like a Kardashian be able to rent it out for their own personal private tour. That would be ridiculous. That would be like going back in time to when there was a monarchy. I can't imagine a time in the future where this would happen. Get wrecked, China! (laughs) The East India Trading Company tries to expand into China and fails. Listen, Chiang Long, we want that oolong and we want it now. There was a whole kerfuffle because the ambassadors wouldn't kowtow. I'm not even sure if I can say kowtow or execution culture might come for me. Qixiao is the most formal kowtow. It's used when meeting the emperor or worshipping the Buddhas and gods. They wouldn't kowtow to the Chinese emperor. And there was a whole deal that fell apart, all because... You know, it's a clash of the cultures. Begin with Kong Shou. Go all the way down to the floor and stay there. But now we don't get any tea. What am I going to drink with my cake if I don't have any tea? We need to get in there and get that tea. Yeah, India's proposing to trade opium for tea. India knows what's up. (laughs) (laughs) I don't foresee China in the future trading very much with the rest of the world. They're very closed off, and they'll probably stay that way. I don't think they'll be manufacturing goods or, you know, they're not going to have very much power in the future, so we shouldn't worry about kowtowing to them. We will never kowtow to you, China! Get back! (laughs) There's no end in pandemic. A yellow fever outbreak in Philadelphia kills over 5,000 people. We don't know what causes this yellow fever, but we have a strong suspicion it's bats. 20,000 people fled Philadelphia and moved to Austin. (laughs) Get wrecked, pig slavery. Get wrecked, pig slavery. Eli Whitney invents the cotton gin. Now, I don't know about you guys, but old Bridget Phetasy knows a thing or two about the future, and I predict that this invention will end slavery forever. Now that the cotton gin is here, get wrecked, pig slavery. We don't need it anymore. We've got this industrial revolution. We have this nice patented technology. We knew the free markets would fix this. We said the free markets will come in. They will fix slavery. Eli Whitney's only goal was to uh, fix this and eradicate slavery. Something has been invented and we can eradicate slavery forever. Hooray! What could possibly go wrong? Can't possibly see how this could be a bad thing. This is going to usher in a new era of big technology. The cotton. A promising era. Let's check the sky with our weather clairvoyant. Un lindo tiempo, pero al mismo tiempo, justamente, va a venir la lluvia. Va a decir presente. We can show you that things have actually improved from the 1700s. Everything was tragic and racist back then. Now it's just tragic and somewhat racist. And you could get your head (laughs) cut off for any little thing. Yeah. When people say cancel culture isn't real, I'm going to be like, it'll be real when we start guillotining motherfuckers. (laughs) Fantasy news! If you want to help support us doing more of these, I can't see why you wouldn't, make sure you go to fantasy.com and subscribe. This is the best way to support this show. Let us know in the comments what kind of historical dumpster fires you'd like to see, what events you'd like us to cover or build a show around. Let us know if you subscribe. We look forward to hearing from all of you. Like, subscribe, comment, touch my bells and buttons. Make sure you tell Maggie in the comments what costumes you need to see me in next. We will provide for you because we are the theater of the plebs. 
I want to thank Dave Yates and Better Fetacy. I can't do this without them. Research writers, thank you, Sammy Flapsenfold, for procuring the cake. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Maggie, for the costumes and the hair and all of the help. You're welcome. Thank you, Bridget. <laughs> Execution culture is coming for you and those you love. The theater of the plebs is glorious. <laughs> This is the theater of the plebs. Yeah, it totally yeah. is. We are the theater. We, we are, are the theater, the theater of, the of the plebs. Then we have. I'm going to eat more cake. <laughs> You've got to stop eating it though, because I'm worried about continuity for later in case we need to add stuff in, like. Mm. Give us a fantasy news, though. Mm. Mm. No, wait, give us fantasy news before you eat that. God damn it. There's another berry. I was eating cake and got in trouble. For continuity. We must do it for the continuity. Oh, boy. What was that? She needs oxygen. Losing her mind. <laughs> It's what I got today. <laughs> you are. That wig is making you crazy. <laughs> the Chinese probably put something in it. It's seeping into my brain. It's probably fentanyl. There's fentanyl in this wig. Oh, God, there's powder. <laughs> This has been your dumpster fire for the month of October 1793. I'm Bridget Fetessy. Now make me rich, but not rich enough that you'll chop my head off. <laughs> <laughs>